Hey, how's it going? Uh, I think I need volume. You can't hear you. me. Oh, now I can. Now I can. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah. I just sent you a little note. I want to see if we can um, set up a time just sort of because you because because you're kind of in your last week or so of the first 30 day. Okay, um, wait, has it been that long? Oh my gosh. Well, it's like it's like a, there's like another week. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. One more week. This yeah, is sure. Okay. Um, just so we can sort of talk about what, you know, what kind of what worked, what didn't work, what, what might interest you going forward. Yeah. Okay, cool. Cool. Um, so I sent you in, 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 um, the app, I sent you like a, the calendar link again. Oh, okay. I'll have to, um, yeah, I'll, t I'll take a look. I, I, I think I've been missing a lot of the messages in the app cause I'm just like not looking at them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. So I'll I will, yeah. I will take a look. Yeah, I just, I think, I, I think I just, I answered you about Thanksgiving and then this. Oh, okay. Not a lot. Yeah, right. yeah. Cool. There's not a lot. Right. Um, so we'll see who joins today. This is, um, this is a gentle practice. So like, I, I'm, I've got, I'm sort of finding that I've got like a range of people at different mm -hmm. places. Um, so I'm kind of folk. Um, this is like a little more gentle on Saturdays. Yeah, that works. That's great. Yeah. 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 We'll see who we'll see who joins. It, it depending on who joins. If nobody joins, we can we can pump it up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. Yeah. Right. Um so we'll give it another. I'm I am i am actually gonna I'll be right back. We'll we'll give it another moment for people to join. We'll see. Oh, we're still alone. Okay. Well, let's see what happens at the moment. Okay. How was your Thanksgiving? Nice. We went to, uh, we drove to Vermont. And... Uh -huh. Nice. So my mom lives with me, so we drove to meet my sister, my sister and her husband. And I have a new, um, I have a Chevy Bolt, so it was the first time driving long distance with. Oh, the cool! Mm -hmm. Wow, how was it? Well, Did so you have trouble finding a charge? Yeah, I mean, I identified all that. You know, you've got apps and everything, so I identified uh, it. We had to stop twice, um, and I feel like we could have stopped once, but we would have gotten there on like the dregs. Yeah, so, and that would be scary. <laughs> right. So it was my first time. So I just stopped twice to just be really. Yeah. 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 That makes sense. That's cool, though. How do you like it? I really love it. I mean, I, it's just like such a pleasure to drive without admitting carbon. You know what I mean? It's, it's, yeah, right. And most yeah. of the time, cool. um, because I, 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 got, I got this house last year and, and the person already had the charger on the house. 
So I just have this easy charger at home. Oh, that's great. Yeah, but that's great. time. I'm just driving by gas stations going, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> that's nice. Yeah, that's really nice. Yeah. What kind of, did you buy a local car there or what'd you do? Oh, uh, we don't have a car. We we try to live without a car if possible. And we don't need one here. Like it's, no, it's just, yeah. it's just like New York. You can like walk everywhere pretty much. It's nice. So we, we've rented like cars a few times to go away for the weekend, but yeah, it wouldn't pay us. We don't have parking here either. So it wouldn't really pay to get one, I think. That's great. So it does seem like you and I are kicked today and I feel like we're going to do, we're going to do what I planned, but we'll kind of up it a little bit. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. So let's start, um, let's start standing. And one thing that's kind of, do you have yoga blocks, right? I do, yeah. Yeah. So grab a yoga block because it can kind of be a little mm -hmm. information if I put this between my thighs and I could put it at the narrowest or I could do the slightly thicker. I don't want to do this wide way, right? But I could do yeah, it. But the, yeah. Yes. And like, this is perfectly useful because what I want to do is mm -hmm. really draw my legs into the midline, like we say in Pilates. And mm -hmm. as soon as I draw in, I feel like it does such a good job of reminding me to lift my hip bones and draw my core up. Right, kind of just like let it go and draw in again. Mm -hmm. And let it go and draw in again. So it's kind of it's interesting how just pulling in here activates the core in this nice way. And the chest is elevated. And the only thing I'm gonna add and relax the shoulders. And the only thing I'm gonna cue I'm gonna add is then see if you almost can feel like you're pushing your feet out at the bottom. And that's sort of another little piece of information that can be useful. Okay. I'm really aware of the edges of the foot. Uh, and I'm such a pronator, so this helps me kind of try to roll that up since I've got such a tendency to kind of roll in. Okay. All right, good. So that's where we are. So, and, and I don't want, and I, but I, with all of this, I don't want like locked knees. So just, I just had to adjust myself so I wasn't locking my knees. And just come into your breath here. Just gradually deepening it so you get involved with some belly breathing, diaphragmatic breathing. Started to talk about this in Pilates, but I'm not sure if I was talking about it the day that you were the last day you were there, which is called zipper breathing. So, what I want you to do is inhale and sort of so the belly kind of fills, and I'm and I'm taking air down low. Then when I exhale, I want to from my pelvic floor feel like I'm zipping up some tight blue jeans all the way up. So I'm exhaling as I zip up and then finish exhaling. And then when I inhale, I wanna feel like I'm unzipping. So just gradually bringing the air into the belly as I unzip. So that's the notion. I'm gonna exhale and zip up. Finish emptying my lungs. Inhale, fill my lungs first and then keep inhaling and unzip. So try just a few more like that, just with that idea of zipping and unzipping. I almost feel like unzipping is harder than zipping. All right. So starting with our heads is very gently I I want it, my my chin is kind of just aiming down, right? My neck is not my neck is nice and long in the back. And all I want to do is tip my chin up like I was drawing a half circle underneath my face. So I'm just rocking side to side. Very gently, just discovering how my neck feels today.
keeping the leg action and the core action. And then when I'm comfortable with that, I can take it into a complete head circle if I now draw the top part of the circle, but it's pretty gentle, right? And then take it the other way. So this is meant to be super gentle, super easeful. Go by how your neck feels. Don't go anywhere that doesn't feel good to your neck. You might notice some crunching. Noise is never a problem. Pain is a problem. Couple more each way. I'm actually getting quieter as I go. All right. Then let's let's put our hands on our shoulders. We're gonna now take our thoracic spine in a circle. I'm gonna turn to the side just so it's clear. So I'm gonna drop my chin. And then I'm rotating my shoulders to the side. And once I get there, I'm side bending and then taking myself back into a back bend, taking myself over to the other side and then making sure I've rotated to the other side. And then I'll come around to center. I'll show it to you from the front in case that's any clearer. We can switch directions each time. So I'm rotating to the left, then I'm side bending left taking myself into a back bend, side bending to the right, making sure I've completely rotated to the right, and then I'm taking myself back around. So we'll go, uh, we're gonna do three times each way. So I'm going back to the right this time. Just take it at your own pace. Again, just kind of noticing any clues from your body. So I personally have one more time to the left. So when you're done, drop your arms and then just slowly come back up and then have a moment just standing here and just noticing how you feel and any information you got from that. Um, and now let's just, uh, my palms are facing away from me and I'm just gonna flip up bending my elbow and flip back down again. So that's all that's happening is I'm flipping up, flipping down but I can sort of send that information up from my feet to my legs, to my core, to my chest, to my shoulders. Getting taller as I go. And one more time I'm up and one more time I'm down, great. One more thing with the block here, and then we're gonna change it is, let's do a little standing cat and cow. So I wanna inhale really tall, bring my shoulders back, bring my head up. So here's my cow, and then I'm gonna exhale and scoop everything and drop my head down. So this is, it's pretty small, but it's a little standing cat and cow. We'll do five of these. Last one. And once again, just kind of find your stance but take your block out and we will do, we're gonna do a Qigong thing that I love. So you can stand a little bit wider apart. Let's say we're standing a little bit more like shoulder width apart. My arms are down. I feel like we did this when we were kids. Um, so soften your knees and all I'm gonna do is this. 
I'm going to just turn my shoulders a little bit to the left and then turn them a little bit to the right. And I'm just going to keep going a little further each time and just let my arms swing. So this is a Qigong move. So my arms are gonna keep swinging. And eventually as my arms swing, I'm actually gonna have the opportunity to sort of do a little kidneys tap on my back, which is a nice thing to do. Um, and this is a nice thing that one could do in the morning or one could even do it later in the day to energize if one was like a little bit sleepy or had been sitting for a while. So just keep going. And so by now it's like as big as it's gonna be, as much motion as it's gonna be, the momentum of your body going side to side. And then to undo it, I just wanna slow it down. So I'm gonna undo it the way I built it. So just very gradually, I'm going to slow down and it'll take a while and then eventually there'll be no movement by the time I come to the end of it. <laughs> I love that. That's Qigong. Um, so let, let's do a little bit of knee and hip mobility. Um, and you may just do this completely balanced or you could put your hand on a chair or you could put your hand on a wall. Um, so you can make your choice of how you're going to do it. Um, I, I may put my, I'm a little less strong on my left ankle, so I may put my hand here. Um, and so what I'm going to do, hopefully you can see me clearly, is take my hip into front flexion. My knee is bent. So I'm coming up just like this. Then I'm going to externally rotate. So I'm going to take it to the side. Then I want to go into extension. So I'm taking it back behind me. Then I'm going to pull my knee in towards the other knee, internal rotation. And then I'll take it up to the beginning, hip flexion, knee flexion. So I take it out. I take it back behind me. I take my knee in. I come up one more in this direction. And then end up. Now we're going to go inside. So I'm going to drop in, extend, externally rotate, come to the front. Drop in, extend back, internally rotate, flexion to the front. Last time in and back, externally rotate up. Great. And then stand and just notice what you notice. And we'll go the other way. I can balance better on this leg. So nice and tall. Um, so I'm going to knee flexion external rotation, extension, and then I bring my knee in and I come back around. So external extension, internal rotation, and then back to hip flexion and knee flexion, external extension, internal, and then I'm up. As I'm balancing, I'm gonna take a little break before I go the other way. <laughs> Great, so uh, we're up. Now I'm going to drop in, extend back, externally rotate, come to the front, internal and back, external and front, internal and back, and external and front, and then stand up. So those are all the directions my hip goes in and just stand and notice how your hip feels after that. All right. Um, so just a little bit for our ankles. Um, all I'm gonna do is um, put my heel out and then like ball, heel and ball, heel and ball, heel and ball. And then standing on the other foot, heel and ball, heel, heel and ball. Just a little bit for the ankle. Now we can come to the front of our mat and uh, inhale and grow nice and tall. And then when I exhale, I'm gonna step 
my right foot back. I'm gonna sit up on the ball. Front knee is stacked over my ankle. And I can inhale my arms up and get nice and tall. If I feel unstable, I could put that heel down more in a warrior one position. But if I'm able to stay in the high lunge, that is great. Let's catch up together again with this lengthening inhale. Then I'm gonna exhale and I'm gonna bow and I'm reaching forward, I've got a flat back and I'm just bowing towards my thigh. And I'm gonna inhale and come back. And exhale to bow. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale up. Let's take two more just like this. And exhale. Inhale up. Now I want to take us into a revolved crescent lunge. So let's catch up with breathing. So I'm going to inhale and get taller. When I exhale, I'm going to bow again. But now I'm going to drop my right hand to the mat and twist towards my thigh, turning shoulders and ribcage to the back of the room and inhale here. And then exhale and take me up. And inhale to step forward. Great. Um, we'll go second side. So inhale, nice and tall. Exhale, step your left foot back. So right knee is stacked over my ankle. Inhale up, come nice and tall. Exhale to bow forward. Inhale, take me up. And then let's catch up with an inhale together, nice and tall. And then we'll exhale, bow, and then take myself into that revolved position. Inhale here. And then exhale, take yourself up and inhale tall. And exhale and step forward. Beautiful. At the front of my mat, the inhale, arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Just drop everything down. Super relaxed. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, forward fold. And then just take your feet back behind you. And we're going to come into a seated position. Um, right leg's in front of left leg in an easy seat. This is comfortable for you? Yeah. yeah. So sitting just nice and easy. We're going to do a couple things here. A little bit of a series here. So sit nice and tall. Notice that your shoulders are right above your hips. Sometimes when we land, uh, or sometimes when I land, I'm not, I'm not realizing I'm leaned forward a little bit. So I want to sit up so the knee, the shoulders are stacked over the hips. And I'm sitting on those sits bones. And let's inhale our arms up and exhale. I'm not mirroring you. I'm gonna take a side stretch to the right, landing my left hip down and reaching my left fingertips away. Just take it as far as it will take me. So I end up down on this elbow, but you might not be quite that low, that's okay. And then inhale back up and exhale, take it the other way. And one side might be a little less stretchy than the other. And inhale up. Now exhale into a twist. So now I'm turning shoulders and rib cage, landing left hand on right knee and looking back behind me. And inhale back up and exhale, take it the other way. Look back behind you. And then inhale back to center, floating the arms down. Let's take a little seated cat in the half. So again, it is pretty small, uh, but I'm going to, and actually, and change the cross of your legs. So put your left leg in front now. 
Uh, so I'm going to inhale, a little back bend looking up. I'm going to exhale, drop, draw everything up and in. So keep going. So it's a very much an upper body cat and cow. My pelvis is not moving. My hips are stable underneath me. Couple more. Beautiful. And then let's just take little circles. So what I want to do is kind of I'm lifting myself up and out of my hip. And I'm just going to take myself on a little circle around. I can circle back to and come back to the front. So note, and just notice which direction you're going in because we're gonna make a little switch. So I happen to be going around to the left. Great, then come back to center and then switch your cross one more time and now take your circles in the other direction. more time. Beautiful. And let us um, take out my right leg. So my left knee is bent. Inhale my arms up and exhale with side stretch. I'm taking this, my side body down towards the leg. However far it goes is fine. And inhale here. And then exhale and then turn. So now this is head to head to knee pose. And again, be where you are. You don't have to be pulled way over. Just be where you are. And then open back up to the side position. And then come back upright and take the left leg out and sit with the both out for a moment nice and tall on your sits bones and then bend the right leg in we'll take it the other way so i'm gonna inhale up i'm gonna exhale take myself over wherever it is for me is perfect i'm open to the side inhale here then exhale and turn. So this, we call this head to knee, but wherever you don't have to bring your head to your knee, wherever it is for you is perfect. I'm, I'm pretty flex here. So don't worry if you're not as low as I am. Feel this hip settle down here and then open up to the side again. And then come back up. Great. So a little more. We've been involved with the hips, and I love this too. This is called a shin box. So my feet are wider than my shoulders, and I'm just going to drop my knees one way and lift them up. And I'm going to drop my knees the other way. It's also called a windshield wipe break, but it's, but it's called a shin box in this position. So we're rotating the femur in the hip joint and the knees are getting some mobility to work here too and, and as are the ankles a couple more just like that and then I'll add, I'll add a little challenge that's not necessary but when you come back to your other side an added challenge is to come up now bother some people's knees and you could do it and come up on you know with something patting your knees getting um, it back <laughs> did it happen yeah yeah so it's kind of it's kind of fun to add that little shh. <laughs> so one more of those and then come back down good i'm at the point where i need to 
double check my time. We're doing okay. Um, all right, so let's do a little bit. Let's actually come down on our back. So settle yourself down on the floor. And I'm going to lift my knees up to the point where I'm perpendicular. And I should really feel my lower abdominals holding me here. If I pulled my knees into my chest, it would take all the tension out of my belly. And if I push my knees further away, it would add tension to my belly. So I'm kind of splitting the difference where I, I want some tension, but not an enormous amount of tension. And my, uh, similarly, my calves are parallel. So it would be, it's easier to be here. And there's more weight if I'm here in this table, what we call tabletop. Okay, so I wanna be in this tabletop position. Just breathe here. You can even try a little zipper breathing here. So feel like you can breathe freely, even though you're doing a lot of work in the lower abdominal area. And what we're gonna to add to this is a little active leg work. So my left leg is gonna stay isometrically like that. My right leg is gonna straighten. And if I can't straighten it all the way, just, just somewhere in the air, even if I have a bend, that's okay. And I'm gonna flex, and I'm gonna lower that heel down to the ground. At the bottom, I'm gonna point, and I'm gonna pull it back up again. So there's the work of it. So, Lots of core going on. And then we're really manipulating the, working with the left so as, I mean, I'm sorry, apologize, the right so as, and glutes are contributing to this active leg work over here. A couple more. Right up at the top, drop into the tabletop and then relieve yourself by hugging everything in, maybe rock your sacrum a little bit. Then restore the tabletop. Now the right leg is gonna be the isometric leg. The left leg is gonna be the working leg, flex it. So I'm dropping it down, pointing and lifting it up. Breathing and feeling secure. Two more. Beautiful. And actually take both legs up and point and flex just to kind of relax tension, have a little legs on the wall moment. Beautiful. And then put the feet on the ground as wide as your mat and we'll windshield wiper again. So I'm dropping my knees from side to side. In this position, supine, I feel like it's an opportunity to really relax my core. So just take, so you're breathing, but just take, take, take all the action out of the core, right? Because we've been, we've been very core focused all practice. So just let it all really relax. Beautiful. And then take your feet underneath you. I, I actually, rock your, rock your knees in so you can rock up to a seat. Then your feet are on the ground. We're going to do a different kind of tabletop. So my hands are behind me, um, and I tend to have my fingers aimed in, but everybody's arms are different. So just put your hands where they're comfortable for you. Um, it, works, it works in any direction. Um, and I'm going to do a tabletop in a different way. I'm going to take my hips up to tabletop here. I don't usually drop my head back. I usually keep my head up, but wherever your head's comfortable is fine. So just a few of these up and down to so take myself up. Two more of those. All 
All right. Um, so we want to take ourselves, um, we're going to take ourselves up, but let's do it this way. Let us, how many times? Let's lift up into a plank. So come into a plank. And have your feet be shoulder width apart and just breathe in your plank. Beautiful. And then walk your hands back to your feet. And then reverse swan dive all the way up to standing and exhale hands in front of your heart. And let's take some tree pose today. So I'm going to stand nice and tall. And I can even remember that hugging in of the block that we started with. So my core is really activated. So for tree, I really want to hug in these side hip muscles, glute medius, and draw my core up and in to be successful in tree. So let's start balancing on the right foot. And I like Lunchly Mudra as the beginning point for my hands. And my options are as follows. I can kickstand if that's what I need to do for my balance, or I can place my foot on my shin or I can place my foot above my knees, which some people usually lift it up like that to place it above my knee. So I want to pick what's best for me for balancing purposes. Um, so hugging everything in, take the position you want to take today. And this, this knee, this left knee is externally rotated. So that means glute need is helping to externally rotate my left leg and so I mean glute max in the back is externally rotating that it and then glute mead is holding me together. I don't seem to have good balance today. Every day is different. I have I what I deal with is on the right side I've got a problematic knee. On the left side I've got a problematic ankle. So it's all a work in progress. I don't want to be on my knee. I want to be below my knee or above my knee. Oof. See where you are today. Now, if you feel like you get to a nice balanced place, you can reach your arms up and add that balance feature. Beautiful. All right. And then just step it out and shake everything out. We'll get ready for side two. And you know, you always can take a chair or a wall or be near a wall as well. So nice and tall, hugging in, hugging in, hugging in, hands and arms like mudra. So again, kickstand, place my foot or place it up high, wherever it works for me. And the glute max externally rotates the right leg. Glute needs on both sides really hug me in, my core draws up. And if I feel nicely balanced, then I can lift my arms. Let's step out, shake everything out. And I believe we have, yes, we have enough time. Let's go ahead and just take it again because it's sort of nice to, get a chance to revisit it a second time uh, and notice what I noticed. So foot is really solid, hugging in, hugging in, hugging in, and then placing my foot where I want it to be. And if and when I feel secure, I can elevate my arms. Stepping it out, shake everything out. And we'll get ready for side two. So really making contact with the whole foot on the floor, drawing in, drawing up. And then placing your foot where you 
where it's successful for you with this external rotation of the right leg. Feeling long in the torso. And when you feel balanced, you can elevate your arm. Fantastic. Um, so let's come to the front of our mat again and inhale our arms up. Exhale, forward fold, drop everything over. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, drop everything over. And then I'm going to take two knees back behind me and turn and face this way. So let's have some gate pose. So I'm really elevated here, right? So same thing as almost just like I was standing. So long tailbone, elevated core, hip bones up. And inhale and get taller. And then exhale and take your left leg out to the side. So I've got my foot on the mat. And I'm gonna inhale my arms up. And I'm gonna exhale, really land this knee down, go to the left and stretch over my leg. So I'm anchored by that knee and reaching with these right fingertips. Then when I inhale up, I'm gonna exhale into a supported side plank. So I'm gonna put my hand down. I like to bring my right shoulder blade underneath my, uh, my shoulder here. And here I am in a supported side plank. And maybe this is good for me, or I can float this leg up. And of course, if I'm if I, it's in my practice, I could take myself into a full side plank if I wanted to do that. So those are my options. And then come down and then back up again, pull the knee in. Let's throw some camel in the middle before we take second side. So again, I'm gonna inhale nice and tall. Then when I exhale, I'm going to lift my chest and drop back into a back bend. And I can have my hands here if I need that support, or I can drop my arms back behind me on my heels and breathe here. Inhale back up. I love the quadricep stretch there. And then we'll come around for gate pose, second side. I'm going to stretch my right leg out. Inhale up. Exhale, come over towards the right, reaching with my left fingertips, anchoring with the left heel, knee. Inhale, back up. Exhale, left hand down, put my left shoulder blade underneath to really support me here. And my options are to be here, supported plank, supported plank with an elevated leg, or if I do it in my practice, I can step up to a full plank. It's full side plank, Vashasthasana. Beautiful, bring that knee in, come on up. Let's visit camel one more time. So drawing the whole torso up, 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 up with an inhale and then exhale and take myself back. Breathing in the pose. Inhale, on up. Let us um, take ourselves around to supine. And we're going to have a little more work, and then we'll move into some stretches and some twists and into some bhasana. We've got a little nice time here. So again, I like to lengthen my tailbone and my, my knees are bent, my feet are underneath my knees, but my torso from my hips on up to my skull 
I want to feel just like I was standing. So my arm bones are in the socket, drop back down towards the mat as opposed to curling off the mat. Into my breath here for a few cycles. Let's take our arms down by our side. We're going to inhale on the ground. And then when I exhale, I'm going to push my hips up into bridge, let my arms float up and overhead. And I'm going to inhale and come back. So keep going with that flow. One more time like that. Exhale and then inhale and come down. Now, take your arms up into a cactus position. I'll sit up so that's clear. So your arms are in a cactus position. And now what I wanna do first is I'm going to inhale on the ground. When I exhale, I'm going to push my hips up and I want to lengthen one leg. So I'm going to turn it into a walking bridge. Inhale and come down. Exhale, second side. So using your breath. Now let's complicate our lives. I'm going to come up, pull my elbows together at the top. Two more. And the top of it, keep bring your keep your elbows together, bring your feet down. And all I want you to do now is pull your elbows down towards your belly button and then push up towards the ground behind you. So just a little bit of movement here with the shoulders and slightly different position. It's called an elbow squeeze. Beautiful. And then just reach your arms up and overhead and all the way around and kind of cross them in the front and then take them out and around. A few more circles like that. Down by your side. So let's lengthen our legs. Once again, checking in, that I have a long tailbone there. Settle my upper body down, arm bones in the socket, hopefully shoulders dropping back to the mat. And we're actually gonna do reclined tree in the theme of tree today. So what I'd like to do is this, completely relax my left side, hip down to toes, and I'm gonna slide my right foot up the inside of my left leg up to the thigh whether or not I did this when I was in my standing pose and drop my right leg into external rotation. So I should feel my glute muscle, glute max underneath there doing that external rotation of this leg. Knee is bent. And then just come into my breath here. As relaxed as I can be. The left hip it wants to stay down. It doesn't want to roll towards the right. So I even can put a hand on that hip and we'll breathe here.
then I'm going to lift my right knee up, put my right foot on the ground, have my left hand available, because now I want to go into a twist where I'm going to drop my right knee over to the left, have my left knee oh, towards the left, my left hand grabs the right knee to pull it over, the hips just go with it. Then I'm going to take my right arm and tee it out and see if I can lower my right shoulder down to the ground and look out over my right hand as I'm in this twist and breathe. Go up the knee and come back to center, bring your right leg out and just take a moment to notice how you feel and breathe. Ready for side two. So again, the right side is completely relaxed. My left foot's gonna slide up my right leg to the upper thigh position, dropping into this external rotation. My right hip is going to stay down and I'm going to come into my breath here. Put the left foot down, right hand is available. Drop my left knee over to the right, grab it with my right hand, and let the hip go. And then tee the left arm out. See if I can bring that left shoulder down to the ground. It may or may not. And then roll my head around and look out over my left hand. We'll be here. to the center. Take another moment where you just stretch out and just notice how you feel. And then you can bring your knees in. Let's take it for a happy baby or any other kind of final pose your body is asking you for before Savasana. And then when you feel ready, you can lengthen your legs and let your arms come down by your side. I like to turn my palms up, up, and you can do an experiment, flip them both ways and see if up makes your shoulders feel a little more open, collarbone a little broader. I like to check in with that tailbone too. If it's cool, you could pull a blanket up and over you. Come into our breath. 
Once again, just a deep, nice diaphragmatic inhalation. And, and as we're coming into Savasana, uh, just a pretty passive, easeful exhalation. The beauty of life is that both inhale and exhale is passive when I need it to be passive and can be activated when I need to activate it. And use the breath system to help to calm my nervous system. It's a general rule. A longer exhalation is calming to the nervous system and inviting the parasympathetic nervous system to take over. The exhale being more yin. Conversely, the inhale is more yang. If I have a longer inhale than exhale, it's pretty energizing. So I could do that if I was looking to be energized. So again, we have this natural system. The breath system is designed to work with your nervous system and help you to dial up or dial down according to your need the need of the situation that you're in. So just be with your breath and you can take a tour of your body and just notice if any particular part of you is drawing your attention. And conversely, you can notice the parts of you that are quieter and are not drawing your attention. still for a few more moments.
and G can be the middle one. Big little fingers and toes. If you're watching at home, you could take a longer savasana if you wish. You're going to sit up with little fingers and toes. And we rotate ankles and wrists. And let that grow into some real stretching of your limbs. to come up, I can roll on my side and take myself up gently that way, or I can rock, pull my knees in and rock. And if I rock up, I can actually rock a few times just to kind of do a little spinal massage if I wanted to before I decided to actually sit up. And then we'll, let's sit. Uh, easy seat, cross-legged, or wherever you're comfortable. Uh, again, stacking shoulders over my hips, lengthening my torso up. Let's share some final cycles of breath together. So I'm going to inhale through my nostril. And I'm going to exhale and sigh it out, middle side. Relax everything on that side. Inhale. And sigh it out. Inhale, inside out. Thank you for joining me for this gentle yoga flow this morning. Namaste. Hello, thanks. That was very relaxing. A little bit of work, mostly relaxing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was great. Right, good. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Um, all right, my friend. So let me uh, know what the good time to talk is. Yeah, I will. I'll check the. I'll check the app. All right. All right. All right. See you soon. Have a good Saturday. You too. Bye. You too.